What's up everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex and in this video I want to talk about some spoilers in Gotham Knights. So I did the full review yesterday and I want to talk about mainly and I don't even know if technically the beginning of this game is a spoiler because literally the second you turn it on it's what you see. But I want to talk about that beginning. I want to talk about the end. I want to talk about the Court of Owls and I want to talk about those kind of things in this one. So this is uh, what I would call a spoiler cast where we're just going to go over that stuff. So if you don't want spoilers obviously turn away now but you clicked on the video so I assume you want to talk about it as well let me know your thoughts because this is kind of the real big stuff that really you know either helped or hurt the game and uh, we'll talk about what I think about it but let me know what you think in the comments below as well all right so let's start with the opening because the opening is phenomenal again I didn't know even when live streaming and talking about this game in a uh, review and all that stuff, I never showed the opening. I never talked about the opening because I just don't know what's kind of allowed, you know, on social media nowadays. But no, the beginning is honestly awesome. I, I think the idea that you you run with that Batman's dead, 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 dead. He's not coming back, you know, in the marketing. Now the ending, I have a huge problem with, but the beginning showing him and showing him really skillfully i think is awesome because you really get the sense that yeah this is a batman i mean he's no pushover right he loses but he's really going out you know as well as he possibly can fighting an elite an elite uh, level opponent right while trying to do other things while he's fighting the opponent so it's not even just like you know he had his mind on Ra's al ghul so i loved it i thought it was one of the best i mean it's like what seven eight nine minutes long it is a long cut scene and it just keeps going and it's it's just epic it's a really great scene and that gets you right in i mean arguably the game can't really live up to that scene because there i mean i'm trying to think about it right now as i'm talking is there another scene in this game that matches it in terms of that intensity and that like high octane action and the answer is probably no you get a couple scenes at the end even when fighting talia as whichever knight you chose that that's pretty epic as well but it's not i mean it's just not as long right it doesn't match the intensity again the length that that opening has so i loved it now in terms of the spoilers with the core of owls and and talia and bruce obviously at the end so i mentioned in my review i'm really disappointed in what they did with the core of owls and i really think they had it like they had it right in the palm of their hands but what was odd about it is that you build up the entire and this is like a marketing thing i really don't know what their what their mindset why they thought this was a good idea you build up the entire game on the court of owls right like that's the like you look at the marketing there is no league of assassins i mean you know we knew they were going to be in there there were hints we you can go back to the very beginning of the the promotion for gotham knights two years ago we knew okay but if you just watch the trailers you re and even myself i thought this game was going to be a heavy court of owls thing but it immediately starts with Raz al Ghul, Tali al Ghul, and the League of Assassins. It doesn't even have to do with the Court of Owls, and it doesn't get into them for a bit, for a bit of this game. And then when it does get into them, you really don't get, in my opinion, okay, I have to always, you know, start out by saying that just in case people aren't aware. In my opinion, they, they, they don't hang around enough. They don't come across as these masterminds that hide in the shadows that know everything that's going on that have pieces everywhere like yeah, they they say that almost flat out that they do have pieces everywhere that judges are bought off and you know all these high level things and connections they have i mean they say it and i guess you see it to an extent but you at least i never got a feeling that they were like massive that they were an a, a true legitimate threat to be real they were just another faction you know actually that kind of was to a detriment of the game because you think of the the regulators the mob like you think of these factions of uh, of harley clayface and mr freeze the talents are just another one of them they're specialty kind of enemies the only thing that's unique is uh, is it the actual talents is that what they're called the ones that you have to stun you have to stun them before you can actually attack them that's really the only unique thing and then they're like elite level guard thing is is pretty neat and probably the coolest of the group but they really are the same as everything else so even when you're fighting them in the minute to minute gameplay you don't feel like you're fighting a much more elite class does that make sense you don't feel like they're much better or worse than any of the other factions you fought up until that point and you'll never uh, that never changes okay and then in terms of the story and 
I feel like they just revealed the leader being Jacob Kane. They revealed that very early, not necessarily early in the game, but early into the Court of Owls storyline. Because again, the Court of Owls, I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure they don't get introduced until, what, like chapter two? Because you have to meet Penguin first before you start to get into that. So let's say two, maybe even three, but it's, I think it's probably before then. And I mean, they really resolved their conflict by what, chapter 6, I think, is when, you know, he gets arrested and then he gets killed. So it's like, you you have such a short time with them as the established villains where Talia kind of takes a back seat. I don't like it. I don't like it. And again, the biggest thing of, of all, of all of that, is I just don't think they were in a an established foe that they were who they're supposed to be. You think of the Court of Owls in the comics, and I don't even read the comics and I know this stuff. You think of them as this, like, underground group, but again, they're everywhere, and they're very smart, and they're smarter than Batman, and they know things uh, all over the place, right? Like, they are very... Uh, I only I was gonna say talented is that that's probably not the right word but they're just really good and I never got that they always seem to they actually maybe because of how good the knights were in this game like how productive and how much they got things done like the 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 court of owls were always kind of like flailing like they didn't know what was going on and things are kind of breaking out around them they're not being very successful at any point in fact they're always uh their their plans are basically always failing or always being stopped because you as the character are stopping them but you never have a time where they're better than you it's very little time that that actually happens and then you get back to talia and uh you know the bruce idea at the end of the game well all right look I think in a way they hit the emotion there because I will say when he comes up and the music is really good and it is a really good scene and you know I was playing as Batgirl and when you're talking to Bruce like when you have to beat him up and then kind of like talk some sense into him I, I liked it and I like the idea like I see why they did it but the idea of bringing Bruce back and then you beat him up and then Talia just stabs him like immediately and then, then you fight Talia, and the boss fights, as I've talked about, I hate, like, all the boss fights because of how long they are. They're clearly designed for two people, even though it, the rest of the game isn't designed for that. So I really didn't like the Talia boss fight in the same way I didn't like any of them. So that kind of hurts the ending as well, although she is cool. She's a cool character. I like her attacks. And then you have Bruce killing himself. <laughs> so, so, okay, you market it on he's dead. To start the game out, he's alive, and it's not like, you know, it starts the game with his message, because that's not how it starts, it's after. And so you start the game, he's alive, then you kill him, he has the message, you go through this night thing. Like, here, here's what I imagine they, and Bruce kind of says it at the end, right? The reason I imagine they did this is the knights felt back and forth that they, like, needed Bruce, that they weren't ready enough, or they weren't good enough, or whatever, like, throughout the entire game. And they learned as the game went on that they can handle it. And as long as they work together and, and they have what they need. And then Bruce comes back and there's that kind of moment of, oh my God, like, you know, the mentor, the guy who holds it all together is back. And his last speech is talking about, you know, that, that you can do it. Like you guys are better than I could ever be together. And, and that's, I think, the key. That's, I think, why they did it. They needed for some reason, and I don't know if you really needed it. They needed Bruce to come back to have that sense of, oh, like, he can maybe be the savior. Well, he is a savior. He did save the day at the end of the game in a way, but he also, you know, declares it for the audience, and it's coming from him. Let's pass the, the torch down. It's, it's a passing of the torch game, and he's the one who does it literally at the end of the game with his speech and then with killing himself. So then it has to be the nights after that, right? So... I don't know. I mean, on one hand, I get it. On the other hand, there is something, in my opinion, very funny to him him being alive, dying, coming back to die maybe 20 minutes later. Like, I think, like, because of that length of time, that kind of made it more, like, fun. Like, it, you know, again, like a laughter, but not in a good way than anything. And then, even in that scene, right, then the Court of Owls comes back, and they have a new leader, right, and then they, you know, they try to get the Lazarus Pit, and a bunch of them get blown up, and the rest leave, and then it sets up what could be a potential second game, or just DLC, because you as, uh, whoever character you're playing as, right, kind of narrates that there are still Owl, you know, Court of Owl members still out there, 
Talia left the city, but she left some of her league to kind of monitor the city. So she's still out there. So they're both still around. So that can, you know, that sets up DLC where, or just, well, it sets up three things. It sets up that those faction, you know, crime things can still happen at the end of the game because the, the groups are still around. It sets up a potential second game where you could literally just bring both back or it sets up DLC where you could bring them back and, and finish it there. So, you know, it, that wasn't the worst. I mean, you kind of expect something like that, but it's just like, I don't know. I don't know if I need the Court of Owls to come back because they never really established. I really think they did a pretty bad job at the Court of Owls being the villain. I think I think someone like Penguin was one of the more interesting, cool characters they made uh, in the way that they did him. I really, really liked that. I like Clayface quite a bit. So, you know, they did some pretty okay. That Mr. Freeze, I thought, was very lazy in terms of did they even say why he was doing the th other than he's evil? Were they say, did they actually say why he did the things that he did? I liked Clayface. Harley was pretty solid. But, you know, villain-wise, I don't know. I really don't know uh, if they if they did all that well. I'd give them, like, a 50-50 score because Talia was good at times, bad at times. The the Court of Owls, I think, was just overall not good. And then some of the side villains were, were better than others. But, yeah, that's uh, that's how I feel. So the, the ending of the game pulled it down for me like it wasn't it wasn't uh, outrageously cool like there were cool moments but it just the idea of like uh, I don't know if I agree with these story decisions that they're making that kind of hurt it the court of owls it's like I'm waiting I'm waiting for them to be a force an actual force in this game and again the biggest issue is they are the same as every other faction in the in fact the league of assassins are harder to fight than the talons ever you know they, they are they are arguably one of the easier ones well the normal like henchmen with the masks they're just literally normal people just like some of the other factions that we have but you know i think the league of assassins are honestly much harder to fight probably i, I turned off the health bar and all that stuff so i don't know if they had more health or they were just more difficult in general but because of the disappearing acts and stuff but yeah the core vows really did bring this game down i'd say quite a bit so the story the reason i always said and i said in the the review it's so so it's it's not the story is not this game's strength i think the game's strength if anything is the knights now the knight story and how they you know talk to each other and grow that is a lot better that is a game's strength um the story that's happening around them with the kind of world that they're trying to build not not well done i would say that not awful but not well done either so let me know what you guys think about any you know spoiler element free free reign in the comments and all that make sure you guys are subscribed bell icon turned on so you know when all these videos go up if you want to follow or support me anywhere else all my social media is in the description below thank you guys for watching and i'll see you all on the next one